With hesitation, the stranger asked, Is this your master? After a fashion, Ren admitted. It took him half a second too long to do so, for to hear the stranger speak quite unsettled him. The stranger's voice rumbled forth from deep within his chest, low and looming, reverberating in Ren's ears. The stranger returned his attention to Mr. Grigsby. Then forgive me, my lord, for it seems my purpose lies not with you, but with your squire. Mr. Grigsby appeared not in the least perturbed by this, which Wren put down to his being inert to sour dispositions and rude speech after suffering Wren's indifferent service for too many years. On the contrary, he laughed. Squire! <laughs> my, how fanciful! <laughs> uh, very well, then, he is at your service. Only pray don't keep him over long. Indispensable he is, my good sir. Indispensable! And with the least subtle wink Wren had ever seen, Mr. Grigsby whisked himself away back into the office and shut the door behind him leaving Wren alone in the hall with the stranger once more. If nothing else, Wren supposed he could take Mr. Grigsby's direct address of the stranger as proof that the stranger was not in fact a hallucination. Still, the possibility of a hoax remained, and while Wren might fail as a clerk in many respects, he'd be damned before he'd allow Mr. Grigsby to become as much a laughingstock as Mrs. Tottenham. The stranger furrowed his formidable brow at the closed office door, then looked down at Wren. If you are not your master's squire, then you must be his page. Unless, is your master not a Knight Templar? He most certainly is not, Wren replied, bristling. He is a lawyer, sir. Then what are you? Wren did not often encounter anyone as blunt as himself. It almost tricked him into giving a true answer. Instead, he resigned himself to reply, I am a clerk. I wish you would state your business at once, sir, as I have much to do and little time to spend standing about in corridors consulting with lunatics. If you have so little time as you say, the stranger countered, Perhaps we should meet elsewhere when you are more at liberty, for I have too much to explain at present. How convenient, Wren thought. Aloud, and as much to appease his curiosity as to arrange a meeting, Wren asked, When and where would you suggest? Name your place and time. I am at your mercy. Wren thought he'd prepared himself to expect anything from the stranger. Yet that final phrase gave him pause. In life, he'd more often found matters quite the other way around. The stranger, meanwhile, appeared unaware he'd said anything strange, and awaited his answer with the patience of an oak. The green man, Wren blurted. Tonight, eight o'clock. The stranger conceded with a nod, as you wish. He turned and descended the stair in the same queer fashion, reached the lower landing, and had his hand on the door latch before Wren recovered his senses enough to reply. And whom shall I say is waiting for me, sir? Wren called down, his frustration lending the question a bitter aftertaste. The stranger paused at the bottom of the stair and glanced up to meet Wren's eyes again with that burning gaze. Butcher, he said. Then he donned his mask, threw his hood over his hat, and stalked through the door. The wind slammed it shut behind him.